All right, welcome to this in-depth review and tutorial on Betaflight 4.2. Well, Betaflight just keeps getting better and 4.2 is no slouch in the latest installments of the Betaflight releases. 4.1 was great. Had some hiccups with the Smart Audio uh, edition, the new Smart Audio implementation, which gave me some headaches, but uh, flight performance was good, so um, overall it was worth it. But uh, in terms of flight performance, 4.2 just goes above and beyond. There's a few topics I want to cover in this video, and also that I go into depth in my blog, sfpvair.com, sfpvair.com. You guys should check it out. I got uh, all the CLI commands and all the settings that you guys are going to want to check out to uh, get your race rigs ready to go for this shortened 2020 race season for Betaflight 4.2. New features covered in this video and in the posts. Just a few we're going to cover. The reworking of the gyro loop, which has greatly improved the performance of the flight controller. We'll go into how this improves the race performance, especially in low throttle situations. Also of note is the added compensation for sagging battery voltage, which results in more consistent throttle PID behavior over the entire flight time. Now this might be a polarizing feature that uh, you'll hear racers debate about over the next few months. You know, do pilots want that extra punch at the beginning of the pack with the sag at the end, or would you rather have a more consistent feel of the pack for the duration of the race. I'll walk you through my choice on this topic and the reasoning behind it. And also just some general tuning and filtering tips. Now my initial insights are, um, you know, I've always been hesitant to upgrade Betaflight when these big releases come out because there's always something you'll have to work out and dig deeper into to get your quad flying the way you want. Some pilots enjoy this, but for me, time is money and uh, time spent Fidgeting with Betaflight and software is time lost that I could be used practicing on the simulator, working on quads, or flying in the field. Um, when, you know, once my quads fly good, I don't really like to touch them. Some pilots enjoy that, and that's totally fine. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I had a lot of issues with Betaflight 4.1 when they changed the way Smart Audio functioned, which drove me nuts for a few months. And for this reason, you know, I was kind of hesitant to move to 4.2. But after reading the release notes and talking to the Baylands guys. I was put at ease knowing that all the major changes were performance based and I was particularly excited about the battery sag compensation addition. So before moving to 4.2 I was having uh, some tuning issues with my new frame the OSA, it's my super lightweight box frame. Um, you know I was feeling okay on 4.1, it was flying good but it wasn't that you know super dialed in feel that we all strive for. But as soon as I took off for that first flight on 4.2 I knew it was significantly better. Everything just felt smoother, like the FC was overclocked or something like that. I just couldn't put my couldn't put words to it. But as I get deeper into the battery side compensa compensation, I knew that 4.2 was a true winner in the latest beta flight releases. Before we get into the battery side compensation, just a disclaimer: make sure that you have voltage clearly shown on your OSD. You know it'll be harder to tell when your pack is low because it'll feel the same throughout the entire flight until you get to that end of the battery level. Um, if you aren't paying attention, if you're not careful, your 6S can quickly become a 5S, as you can see here in this video clip. You know, the quad's gonna feel um, pretty pretty similar the whole flight. You're not gonna get that sag that you're used to. A lot of top pilots and uh, amateur pilots alike, they know how their quads feel and they know when they're getting low on battery just by the throttle resolution and the r throttle response alone. So just be careful about that. Make sure your, your voltage is clearly on your uh, OSC and in view so you don't have to look too far away to get to that. Let's talk about throttle limit versus battery side compensation. If you read my blog about spec racing, you may have read that I run a throttle limit on all my race setups. With 4.2 and battery side compensation, we're actually able to, to remove uh, about 10% of the throttle cap. So. Um, I do have my throttle cap on a dial, um, so I'll run it at anywhere from 75% cap to 90%. Um, I very rarely run 90%. I am running uh, the new T-Motor F60 Pro 4s on 1950 kV, so I'm generally in the middle of my dial, which is at 85% throttle cap. 
Um, so with 4.2, we can you know decrease that by 10%, moving us up to 95% throttle cap, just a little cap on the top. Um, so that's you know that's one thing to take note of is uh, if you do run a throttle limit, this is what we call a static throttle limit, where it's just basically on the radio or on the FC through beta flight. Um, you're not going to want to combine these two too aggressively, battery side compensation and throttle limit. Um, so, you know, by limiting the KV, which is basically what we're doing with the throttle cap, we li we're limiting the motor output, thus limiting the amperage on the battery. That's the whole idea behind this. And that's the whole idea behind the static battery compensation mechanism that we're about to go into here a little deeper. So the new battery stack compensation, which we're talking about here in Betaflight 4.2, that's going to add even more attenuation in addition to the throttle limit. So if you have one on yourself, a throttle limit, um, as we mentioned before, take a look at that and make sure it's not too aggressive. The Betaflight devs do suggest removing some of that static throttle limit, i.e. the uh, radio limit or the Betaflight throttle limit um, that you might have set up from previous versions of Betaflight. Their recommendation is to remove about 10% of that throttle, that static throttle limit. When we say saddle, static throttle, throttle limit, excuse me, we're talking about um, on the radio or, or through uh, beta flight uh, from previous versions. So that's uh, pretty much battery side compensation. I, I set mine equal to 100. Uh, you can play around with this if you want. So it's uh, the CLI command on screen, as you can see right now, is set VBAT underscore sag underscore compensation to 100. Uh, with this setup, it felt really good on success with 1950 kV at a 90% throttle cap. Uh, keep in mind though that this is on my very light box frame, which is about 260 grams all up weight. If you have a heavier frame, you might want to run a higher kV for some more power. Uh, but I didn't feel like I needed it. I'm a little rusty though. It's been a, a long winter, <laughs> so uh, some of you fast guys out there with, with uh, permanent tracks might uh, disagree with that one. Um, so let's go into the uh, CPU load improvements really quick. 4.2 has made some big improvements on the PID loop processing, which has led to improvements on the CPU's ability to stay on task. Uh, you know, I can't be certain, but I'm pretty sure that, that, Im that the improved feel of 4.2's tune that I felt right off the bat can be attributed to this. Um, for my initial tune, I just used the sliders. I've been really loving the sliders because I'm not a big tuner. I don't do black box or anything like that. I just play around the sliders until my quad feels good. Um, basically just put them in positions that I thought would be good based on past tunes and it worked really well. Um, no prop wash. You know, it felt great. I love prop wash when I threw the GoPro on with the extra weight. But it, it, you'll see in the GoPro footage that uh, you can barely hear any. Um, so I didn't really feel any need to make any more tweaks after the first flight, to be honest. Um, but, you know, but I'm sure if I wanted to, I could do some black box logging to get it perfect. Uh, but it felt great to me. Um, so yeah, just uh, you know, talking about the PID loop optimization. Um, basically allows tasks to stay more on their scheduled execution times. So this results in a lower reported CPU load percentage. As that's a measure of how effectively tasks are staying on schedule. Basically all you need to know is that your CPU is going to be working less hard, which is going to allow it to do its job better. That means, you know, processing your PID loop, which results in better flight. So that's the short and sweet of it. Not going to get too down deep down the road if you want to get into the details. I'm sure Bardwell's got a great video on that. He always does a great job with those uh, detailed videos. Um, so, you know, in terms of setup, as we mentioned earlier, you want to set that VBAT SAG compensation equal to 100. Also, you want to set VBAT underscore SAG underscore LPF underscore period equal to 2. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it in terms of the CLI commands you're going to want to do. Also, just make sure that your FC has an onboard voltage sensor, sensor which I'm pretty sure all the FCs we're using these days for racing have, so that's not too much of a concern. Um, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll take a look at my PIDs right now and my filter setup, and uh, that's pretty much it. So before we get to that, I just want to take a look at some HD footage so you guys can get a good feel for the sound the quad's making. You can notice that uh, you can hear the motors outputting pretty consistent value 
Um, the peaks are consistent throughout the whole pack. And uh, I noticed I just flew more consistently for three laps and uh, a little smoother because I'm not uh, fighting that peak uh, power at the beginning of the pack and, and like getting kind of overshooting stuff on that first lap, especially when you're a little nervous and trying to get back into the flow after uh, taking a small break. Yeah, you guys can hear the prop wash is pretty much eliminated. And uh, she's looking really dialed in. This was on day two. So not fully dialed in, but feeling pretty good here. And taking a look at the PIDs. So I kept the master multiplier the same stock. Dropped the PD balance down a little bit to keep the uh, motor temps down. If you bump that up too high, your motor temps can get a little extreme. You could risk melting some motor, some of those windings. Uh, PD gain and stick response gain, I bumped up one notch. So what we're left with is a P of 50, 55, 54, I 85, 90, 90, D max 48, 31, D min 25, 27. Taking a look at the rates, what I run is 1.1 for RC rate, 0.58 for rate, and 0.1 for RC expo with a throttle expo of 0.2. And I run the same rates for all three axes, roll, pitch, and yaw. Give it a try and uh, see how it feels. I really really like the way it feels. Last but not least, we have the filtering tab. So for filtering, usually, you know, in the past it can be very difficult to get it dialed in, but uh, with the new sliders, it's made it a lot easier. So I just moved the default filtering to the right one notch towards less filtering. Turned off the gyro low pass filters, the gyro notch filters, leaving us with the gyro RPM filter on the left and the D-term low pass filters on the right. So let me know how it goes for you guys. Uh, 4.2, try the tune out if you have a light frame similar to my setup and uh, give the filters a shot and the rates. If you're searching for some new rates by chance, see how they go. Thanks for stopping by. Hope this helps you guys transition to Betaflight 4.2 and happy flying. Mm -hmm.